How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Columbus Blue Jackets franchise mode episode number six. It has been a minute as we're headed into year number two, the 2021-22 regular season. It's been a couple of weeks since we put out any episodes here. Pretty much of anything here on the channel, did a little wee bowling video, did a little podcast episode, data cast. But uh, in the past week, my computer needed to get some fixing heading into the school year. So I brought that into the shop to get fixed. And I said, hey, while we're here, may as well take a little bit of a vacation. So I put a post out the other day saying that it would be a few days till anything got done. And now here we are. It's time to pick it back up where we left off. Columbus Blue Jackets today. We're going to have a New York Mets MLB The Show 21 franchise mode stream tomorrow night on Wednesday, August the 18th. And then on August the 19th or the 20th, we should have another episode of NHL 07 Atlanta Thrashers Dynasty mode. So thank you for hanging on. I hope that you have been eagerly looking forward to this episode because I know I have. I have been dying to get back into some franchise mode. And let's pick it back up where we left off after offseason number one. In the offseason, we had some negotiations issues especially with Sam Reinhardt we ended up getting him signed for one more year at 5.5 as opposed to getting him signed long term six seven eight years at that seven eight million dollar cap that he wanted in retrospect hindsight's always 2020 we definitely should have done that but hopefully on December 1st or January 1st, it shouldn't be too hard to get him signed back on. Other moves in the offseason include signing Andreas Athanasiu in free agency after we missed out on Anthony Duclair. We called up Liam Foody, who will most likely be in the NHL this season. And defensively, we went out and traded for... Sorry. Well, yeah, we actually did. We traded for Adam Pellick's rights, and then we signed him to a six-year, $4.5 million deal. A bit more than we wanted to sign him for. We have a lot to address in this episode, so we'll get into that in a few minutes. Kyle Wood making his NHL debut up here in the third pair, most likely. Goaltender, we're still confused on the goaltender. The Corpus Salo, Merzlikens, and Drieger. We have Kukan. We signed Benino as well for depth. There's a lot of things that we have to think about in this upcoming, I guess, like post-off season, pre-pre-season, because there's still some decisions that we have to make. So, in the comments of the last one, there were some gems, and there's one that I really, really, really want to focus on, especially. I try to give 30 seconds to a minute per comment and limit it to maybe four or five comments, but there's one that I really want to hone in on after we get through a few of these. That one's going to be from Pat coming up in just a couple minutes. But before we get to that, Jackie's comment is, Sign Marensky and Jones ASAP. I actually learned something. Players, even if they don't want to resign, sometimes still take less money. So try to get Jones at like 7.5. Trade Elvis. That's all I have to say. Great video data. Thank you very much, Jackie. So expiring deals. We're trying to figure out what are we doing with Marensky, Jones, Domi, Jenner, Roslovic, Foodie. It's a lot of names we've got to re get re-signed. We do have a lot of money in extension dollars with 33 Point six six three million. Uh, if we're going eighty five percent on Morensky, we could probably get him around seven point five. We could probably get Jones around six point five. That's if they're willing to take eighty five percent. There has been some talk about trading Seth Jones since the very beginning, especially since he has been also traded in the real world. As we said at the beginning of this franchise mode, we want to try and keep Jones as much as possible. So I will be trying to sign him. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm trying to keep him, but I am going to give him every possibility to stay on this team and be a leader and be a cornerstone on this franchise. If he could start putting up 40 plus points and keeping up the good plus minuses, etc., then I'd be happy to keep him. If it doesn't work out, we trade him, but I will give him every opportunity to make his case. Moving into the preseason, Ed's comment is, for the goaltending, trade whoever has the lowest save percentage, and if Liam Foody does not score more than two points, so he scores less, send him back to the AHL. We're trying to figure out, do we play Liam Foody on that fourth line NHL, or do we put him into the AHL, give him more ice time than just put Benino on that fourth line? Legend left a big comment in part of it near the end. He says, I think Foody should play on the fourth line with some power play time. So maybe putting him fourth line with that second power play balances the ice time, and then perhaps that makes him grow while also allowing Jenner to be the third line center for chemistry, etc. So I'm going to do that in the preseason, see how it works out, and if Foodie can, can, I don't know, be, I guess, content and produce at fourth line slash second power play, I think we'll be in a good place. If not, 
send him back to the AHL. For the goaltending, Vinny says maybe trade the goalie that has the worst save percentage, but give them a little more time than just the preseason to prove their worth. It's hard to judge in such a small sample size. I agree with that. X Kroon GX, the big thing with Jones is you have to ask yourself, am I building this team around him, Rensky, Line, and Reinhardt? Or is he only here until we can replace him? And that's a tough one to answer. If it's the latter, we trade him before he asks for a payday the size of his home state of Texas. If it's the former, we extend him but try to get him to a team-friendly deal. So if he is willing to take that, whatever, $6.5 million deal at 85%, I'd be happy to get him signed up. Again, do we keep him? We don't know. But a lot comes down to can we get him signed? We're going to be trying to start now. If he still doesn't want to sign, he's only going to be taking $8 million or whatever by the trade deadline. Maybe we consider that in next episode when we do part two of the season. Because if a player really wants to stay, they'll be like Landis Gog in the Avalanche, accept less money to stay than they could get on the open market. And by the way, Andrew Peak, it's peak, just peak. No PK, no peaky perfect. We figured that out. And also got to keep re-signing Ryan McInnes. If we don't, his dad, Al, will fire one of those slappers at you. We wouldn't want that to happen. So we got to keep Ryan McInnes happy, of course. So I'm going to do that ASAP because I know we could probably, I don't know, well, probably is a big word. I know we could possibly get these guys for cheaper if they're not having a good season, etc. But that's betting. I don't want to bet against my players. I want to bet on them having great seasons. So I think Wierenski at a 90 overall, willing to take, he right now he's asking 8.875 for seven years 85 percent out is 7.55 so seven years at 7.55 for the guy who could become the cornerstone instead of jones or share that cornerstone role 90 overall two-way d 24 years of age i think that's a steal of a contract if he's willing to do that so no need to rush take a few days we'll talk to you soon zach seth jones now we're going to try starting it as low as possible on the 85 percent I'm willing to give him those six years because that seems to be the cheapest, as unless we went for four years. But I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to do only four years. Let me try the six first off, and we'll see where it goes from there. Eighty-five percent of that is six point five five, so a million dollars less than Zach Wierenski. Six point five five for six years. And Max Domi, I'm willing to sign him as well because he's coming off a very good season. He scored, well, very good comparatively to what we've been seeing. You know, maybe I'm thinking about that first half of the season, but I don't know. You know, 48 points in 78 games for a second, third liner. He was between those two lines. He has six points in seven games in the playoffs. I'm very content with Max Domi. So I wouldn't mind getting him signed up. Uh, five years seems to be the deal. Five, yeah. So five years. 85% of that is 3.95. Five two, so 3.975 3.975 for five years on max domi 85 84 overall still growing good chemistry i'm okay with that i'm gonna leave him to think about it for a few days uh jack rosovic i saw he wants crazy yeah he wants way too much money so i'm gonna leave him for now and that'll be it those will be the only extensions i send out the goalies are also expiring but i'm gonna wait and see who we're signing before i give extensions but actually for kivleniak's i'm happy to give him a big extension right now I will give him, can I go one way? One way, eight years, 0 0.750. Yeah, I will offer him that and see what he thinks because I would like to keep him on this franchise for the entirety of our series. So that's it for that. We're gonna advance a few days in a moment. Now we're gonna move to the Discord server. One comment before we get to Pat's coming from ZNC, Zach. He says, I know we're waiting until Jones for a decision, but he doesn't want an extension. He says that if we do move a guy like Seth Jones, instead of going for Adam Boquist from Chicago, think about power forwards like Kirby Doc or Dominic Kubalik. Or even go to Minnesota, they have good defensive defenseman options like Alexiak on the block, even Ian Cole. Gavrikov could be traded for an offensive defenseman to play with Wood on the third pair. Maybe try to find a different coach for better uh, bottom six chemistry or even trade Liam Foodie while he's valuable. In goalie, I say neither of them comes back. Go for Alex Gorgiev as the starter and he could grow with Halak or Mike Smith out of Colorado as the backups. I like those options very much. I'm very interested in going for power forwards. A lot is going to depend though on this comment coming up from Pat. So when it comes to trades and things for defense, the defense is about to change, I think. So Pat says... I'm going to go through this whole thing, so if you really don't like hearing comments, you can skip a couple minutes, but I think this is really worth your time. 
Pat says, really enjoyed the episode, even if I have some complicated and not very complimentary thoughts on how the offseason went. This is what I need to hear. I need to be held accountable. This was, in a bizarre way, my favorite in a while. Still all in, even if what you read seems harsh. I hope I am dead wrong. In my opinion, you made three large mistakes this offseason. Not signing Zach Hyman was not one of them. Heartbreaking, very. But if he was only going to be a third unit power forward in your head, both sides are better off with not being signed. Mistake number one, Adam Pellick. Why did we go for Adam Pellick? If the plan is to keep Jones, Wierenski, and Falk, we have Falk's partner in Kyle Wood. We need to stop the foolishness and get our most valuable prospect the proper chance to grow. This is his age 25 season, last chance to grow. This team is not a cup contender. This trade was something that a contender does. Do not mess up the next 10 seasons of this franchise. For an 84 overall, it isn't really moving the needle. One season of Wood on pairing number two, he is just as good, he should be just as good, he's younger, much cheaper, and a chemistry fit, he's a created player with crazy shot totals, gives Falk a plus five, and we're going to miss out on that just to lose in round number two? And the same thing goes for Gabriel Carlson, we have two top four defensive defensemen that fit, because the game won't generate any more chemistry like this, that's true. Creative prospects don't have the same uh, chemistry types that already uh, the prospects already in the game have. So play both before that window closes. Please consider this Pelic trade and contract part of a sign and trade to a third team to get something you can actually use. I can't believe I need to tell you to play Kyle Wood unless there's an Adam Pelic channel coming soon. We have the Kyle Wood Prayer Room channel over in the Discord server. So I should have given some warning. This is a Hobbsy level essay in the middle of. Mistake number two, goaltending. At the very least, one of them should have been gone on July 1st. Even your cheapest goalie is taking up over $2 million to play in the AHL. We can't do that. If Drieger is starting, trade Elvis in the $4 million. If Elvis is starting, trade Corpy Salo and maybe Drieger too. Just handling the goalies would have paid for over 70% of Hyman's contract. Or you could have used it too... Mistake number three, the Reinhardt debacle. I think if you had just paid him the six to eight years in the re-sign phase, but yeah, we should, would have saved a lot of money and a lot of headaches. He never wanted less than he did that day. He will only get better and can only become unwilling to do an extension. This is not a flat cap world, and he may cost eight figures after this season when you also have everyone else do. But that is the past. The other two are still fixable. The end, but then I should throw in that I like the Athanasiu contract and Duclair was a great attempt that just didn't pan out. Athanasiu is a solid performance growth candidate if he puts up a solid season. He has abnormally high skating and physical for a sniper, so any boost to his offensive ratings from playing well jack up his overall. I say run with him and trade him after the season. He doesn't sim particularly well for the same reasons his overall spikes, because the sim doesn't care about how fast you are. Also later on in a scouting recommendation says to look at Taylor Radish, so I will watch the list and scout him. Medium top six power forward prospect, so not a bad idea at all. Maybe the NHL 20 version of Michael Rasmussen. Shout out to the Buffalo Sabres NHL 20 franchise mode. I love this quote though as well from Pat. We don't want to have another bad situation where all these players are on expiring deals and they all walk, which is why we came in to fix. Five minutes earlier, pinching pennies so hard the queen screams, tries everything in his power to alienate Reinhardt. So we definitely don't want to be doing that. Thank you, Pat, for holding me accountable for sometimes, I don't know, you know, in an off season, I'm sitting here trying to make decisions, trying to make things happen. It doesn't always go the right way. So the Adam Pellick deal, I am very open to moving Adam Pellick. I thought, you know, he's amazing in the real world. But in this, in this world here, if I switch him and Wood, it's worth it for that plus five for Justin Falk and for Kyle Wood, not only for him to get growth, but also that he is a created player, so he's taking a crazy amount of shots. Falk will benefit a ton, and so will Kyle Wood. It's an amazing duo right here. We clear up money getting Pellick out of there. Yes, we could keep him on the third pair, but I think it makes more sense to just trade him because we don't need six years of that when we'd rather have Wood up there and the money situation. We don't need to be in those money problems because we can just easily sign Reinhardt and whoever else now and even have leftover in free agency to get guys we want to as opposed to kind of taking the third, fourth choice. Even if Athanasiu is good, he wasn't necessarily our first choice. 
So I did a lot of scouting. I went and did uh, throughout the entire league. I was thinking about getting a good prospect forward. We don't have a lot of those in the system. We have some very strong defense. And I came to, uh, I think, a very good conclusion. There's a lot of good prospects, but I'll save you all my searching. On the Anaheim Ducks, they have Jacob Perrault. He is a sniper, medium top six, 73 overall, 19 years of age. And he has exceptionally good shooting stats for his age and, uh, and his player type. 85, 88, 87, 87. A lot of snipers, like Jack Quinn, for example, sniper prospects, have like 80s power but 70s accuracy. So to have him in the mid to high 80s, four-star shooting already as a non-created player, this is very rare. So I like his offensive awareness. I think his other stats can still have a lot of room to grow, but I love the shooting. So I don't really know anything about his pro scout assessment, anything like that, but I'm willing to take a chance, put him in the AHL and see what happens. The Anaheim Ducks, they're going on a tear. They've made some big free agent moves. They signed Tuka Rask. They could use some help on defense. Well, not some help, but they one, two, three, four, five, six. So not that they need help, but they have a lot of mid-range guys. Am I trying to, you know, validate and, you know, excuse it? Yeah, I kind of am. But I think that they'd much rather have Adam Pellick playing over Flurry, Gooley, Mahura. Just because they have, you know, they can go out and make other trades. I think they'd jump at the opportunity to get a very good defensive defenseman like Adam Pellick. Since I think the only other one they have is Adam Larson there. So... Uh, forward wise as well, they have a good core. They have, they just went out and got Gabriel Landeskog. They have Zegris growing. I think they're ready to make a push right now. So I looked at what it would take to get this done. I got to take back a couple contracts. Andrew Shaw, 3.9 million. Got to take him back. And then, uh, Colton Sevier at 1.705. So Andrew Shaw right there can become depth for us, or we could trade him. He's a grinder. So we'll see how his chemistry fits for us. But now they're able to do it. Uh, I think the value is still in our favor a little bit, so we could probably still get some picks. I think maybe a fifth and a sixth would work. So I'm going to send this over to the Anaheim Ducks. I give you Adam Pellick. You go run for the cup. I get a very good prospect, forward prospect in the system because we're lacking those. I free up some of your cap as well and help you out in that department. And you give me a couple of low-level picks. I think everyone's happy. What do you say, Bob Murray? Rejected bit low for us. So let me just try... A fifth and a seventh next season. I th Ooh, no sevenths. So a fifth and a seventh in 2024. What do you say about that? Trade rejected bit low. All right, just the fifth then. And trade accepted. We believe this transaction will contribute to our success here in Anaheim. So we are accepting your trade offer. Thank you very much. And as well, the reason I can't keep Pelic on the third pair is because I want Gabriel Carlson to be playing. So that's another reason that I have to trade him. So thank you very much, Anaheim. Let me make those little line changes, and we'll be back in a second. All right, I believe that is all settled now. Wood and Falk at the plus five. Carlson and Gavrikov here on the bottom pair. The special teams look pretty juicy. Power play, we got plus five and plus one. We could go three and three. Uh, could maybe go... F I thought I saw a five and three at one point, but I'm trying to fit Foodie into here somehow, which takes out... Uh, Athanas see you from being here so we can still play with this as we go throughout and the two-way D doesn't help either with Wierenski and Jones both being two-way D so they don't uh, Seth Jones isn't here either penalty kill zero and zero because it never works and goaltending will be rotating through all those Andrew Shaw his chemistry fit is that he's great in the bottom six so he'll be great depth for us he could even replace Kurashev outright but it does give negative one to the line because he's a grinder. That does relegate Nick Benino to the AHL as well. So just keep note of that. Uh, AHL lines, don't worry about those. I'm signing a couple guys, getting a new coach. So that chemistry will be fixed uh, so as to especially maximize Jacob Perrault. Let's start advancing. Let's see who extends their contracts with us. Let's see who signs with us from free agency. Uh, we could trade away Nick Benino right away. But let's advance a few days and see what the world's telling us. Nothing happens by the first day of the preseason. So easy decision for Domi to resign. Easy decision for Wierenski to resign. That's a huge contract. We're waiting on Seth Jones now. Uh, Evgeny Sveshnikov, extremely happy to accept the offer. So is Korshkov. Uh, he's a power forward. Evgeny Sveshnikov with good uh, potential. And Kivleniex, easy decision. Eight years. Really happy to get him signed on for this franchise mode. Uh, we lose 2-1 to one in the first game there. Seth Jones, easy decision. 
decision. Okay. Even though he didn't want to re-sign, he takes 85%. That is a steal. Uh, we got Now we have Jones and Ransky, 90 and 88 at the moment, both medium elites, signed for under 15 million. That's crazy. Because now all expiring. Let's say, how much do we have to do? We have $22 million. Let's say Reinhardt's going to be a... Three million dollar. Oh, actually, they take out the five point five. So that means let's say we even give them ten million. Why not? Let's go crazy. We have ten, twelve million left over. Just get Jenner, Roslevic, and like Foodie, and we can get some other guys signed up. We got money here. We got money in Columbus. Okay. So I'm waiting for. Actually, now that I got those prospects signed on, I'm gonna fix the lines in the AHL and hire a new AHL head coach. So give me a second to do that. At the moment, the chemistry looks like this, but something like this would be preferable. So I just got to find a coach that maximizes that chemistry. I'm trying to get as many plus three, plus fives in that top six as possible. So a bit of administration stuff that I'll just do off screen. But just to say at the moment, this guy Lacerte, his team fit is 63. So I'm going to go hire this coach, Lubomir Ozins, who, although it's also only a 63% team fit, really loves Korshkov and really likes Perrault, or at least likes Perrault more than our current head coach. So take a hit on Nesterov or whatever, but it doesn't really matter. Peak, not a great fit, but I really, really, really want to try and maximize. Guys, even Shveshnikov could get some good growth. So, and even Dargic Shinsev, that, that would be nice. So, I'm going to try to risk it. I'm going to really go growth heavy as opposed to the team. I'm going to try to really focus on a few people in particular. Uh, offer him whatever associate coach. You have to go around the system always. Lubomir, come on in here for a cool 700 Gs. We'll see what happens there and keep on simulating. It was a 2-1 loss against the Hurricanes with Elvis between the pipes. And then a 4-1 win, once again, with Elvis between the pipes. Lubomir is on board, so I'll fix up the chemistry here. And we go from plus 1, plus 3 to plus 3, plus 3. Uh, actually, could I fix... Because uh, Perrault has a... Oh, he can go on the second line. Uh, let me work on this. Could even go plus one, plus five. Ooh, that really gives Perrault the plus five, which is really nice. Only the plus one for Dargit Chinsev and Sveshnikov, but it gives him more ice time. So I go plus three, plus three, or plus one, plus five. That is the question. At least on defense down here, I'll put Peek on the second pair to give him the plus one. I'll work. I'll give him special teams, etc. But I, you know what? I'll try to give Perrault the plus five, and I'll work on it. If we got to go plus three, plus three, we'll do that. Uh, healthy scratches down here. Gerby, Kuffner, Poo, Fikolanski, Stenland. Two way forwards. We have way too many two way forwards on the team. So, don't want to spend too much time on the AHL. I'm going to do more off screen, but that's what I'm thinking. Over in the NHL, time to switch up the goalies. So, actually, oh, Corpy Salad played both those games, not Elvis. Oh, very interesting. Elvis will get the next start, though. All right, that is all taken care of. Let's give Elvis a start here against the Flyers. Uh, Hugo Almfeld, not a bad trade, actually, but no thank you. Flyers beat us 3-1. to one. Now I'm going to give another... Yeah, I'll give one more start to Elvis here, and then I'll give one to Drieger, and then I'll give him a second start as well, or I'll give it back to... I don't know, maybe Elvis will need another one. He had a 925 save percentage, but... Corpus Salo did very well as well. It's tough because it's it's calendar sim as regular season. It's not live uh, slow sim and playoffs, you know? 3-1 loss again. So back-to-back 3-1 -back losses. We're not scoring a lot, but Elvis seems to be playing all right. So through those two games, 918 save percentage. I'll back him. He can back up Chris Drieger. Corpus Salo can take the night off. Drieger did very well in the regular season when he came over to us from Florida. So we'll play him here against the Devils. Uh, actually, there's three more games here. Okay, so okay, 4-1 win. I'll give him the Penguins as well. And then we'll see who gets the seventh game. That's true. Seven games preseason is. So goalies, Drieger stays in. Penguins are 1-3-1 one, and one in the preseason. We beat them 3-1. to one. That's huge. The two L's coming from Elvis. Ooh, baby. Uh, Max Domi playable injury at the moment. Drieger, 962. Elvis, 918. Not terrible. I'm going to give Elvis the last start here. And I'm going to even slow sim it to see if that changes anything here against the Washington Capitals. We're at home. We're 3 3 0. Let's end off the preseason on a high note. First period, 1 0 caps. Second period, 2 1. Bjorkstrand and Line. We're up 2 to 1. I'll just sim it quickly. And it ends 4 to 2. Thank you, Elvis, for collapsing and letting in three goals in 10 minutes, even though it was on 36 shots. And Mantha, Backstrom, Kent. Okay, great. 
So I'm very inclined to trade Elvis at the moment. I don't know if it's ever been clearer. Uh, it's not super clear, but I'm not sure if it's ever been clearer. Because it's always been very foggy. Uh, let me see all three of them next to each other. Ooh, all three of them next to each other here. So 2 0 and 0 1-1-0, and, and 0-3-0. and 3.14 goals against. But look at these numbers from Drieger and Corpi Salo. We might have to go Drieger, Corpi Salo. Uh, Corpy starts and Drieger backs up and Elvis we get that four million off the books that may just have to be it players player scoring wise six in seven for uh sorry for Sam Reinhardt line a had four goals fantasy three goals Liam Foody only two points one of them coming on the power play so I'm tempted to send him down and just call up Nick Benino and make him play fourth line and then Foody can be a good playmaker for the AHL maybe help that plus five I don't know what so, oof, I'm very tempted to send Foodie down, actually. Uh, Falk, Wood, they didn't really do anything too crazy. That bottom six was, and the third pair D was terrible. So, you know what? Let's make those changes. I know this is a bit of a longer episode, or will be, because of all these little things that are happening. But I'm going to make, I'm going to try and pull the trigger. I know uh, Elvis does not have a lot of trade value, so I'm not going to be looking to really get anything special. Goalies never really have a lot of trade value. You could get like, yeah, you can get like a fourth round pick, right? Third and a seventh, a player and a fourth, depth players. Yeah, so pretty much the Maple Leafs want to take him. I don't want to trade him to Toronto. I prefer to get him out of the Eastern Conference and send him to the West. So I'm going to find a team that doesn't have a starter or a backup or whatever and just dump him there. So I'm going to try moving Elvis to the Winnipeg Jets. They have a lot of goalies, but not really NHL caliber goalies. Connor Hellebuck, then he has three 81s behind him. None of them really did well in the preseason here. Comrie didn't even play. Elliot didn't do well. He's on the block. So they can get a real established backup who's on an expiring deal. So they don't have to commit to keeping him for too long. they got to send me a goalie back the other way. Give me a third round pick. They only went 1-4-0 in the preseason. Maybe they're down for a backup goalie. And there you go. Seems like a sweet proposal on, all our, on our end. So on behalf of the Winnipeg Jets organization, I accept. Third round pick for Elvis Merzlikens. Because goalies don't have trade value, you can't really get much more than that in the game. Seems like a sweet proposal. Yeah, I thanks. I could have gotten like a sixth out of you. And then you would have said, oh, you're not even in the right ballpark, let alone City or I don't know. So anyways, uh, Corpy Salo will, back, will be the starter. Drieger will be the backup. Elvis, it's been an honor having you. Uh, always our nemesis in every franchise mode, basically. Uh, Mikael Berdain, 6th round pick in 2016. He has backup potential, but we have Kivlenix, we have Tarasov. I'm sure he's, he's not bad, actually. He's not a bad prospect. Signed for two years as well. I'm going to just send him to a team that's terrible. Coyotes are 1-6-0. Oh. Actually, I need someone who has a contract spot. But I don't want it to come back to buy, but the Bruins want him. You know what? Got to trade with the Eastern Conference sometimes. So I'll just try and dump him on the Bruins for a fourth. So basically, Elvis turns into a bit more than that. So we get a third from the Jets, which was our own third round pick back. And what, what can we get here? Seventh trade? What do you mean? Hugely inflated. A seventh round pick for this guy. Okay, I guess I'll keep him then. Goodbye. I'll send him down and he can be my third goalie in the AHL. And then I'll just trade him next season or something when teams want goalies again and they're desperate on, on July 1st because no one has goalies. Sheesh. So we're probably already closing in on like 25, 30 minutes in this episode. So I promise I won't make it too much longer. I just want to get this season started and see what kind of questions we may have heading into the season. So year number two, we are ready to rock and roll. We got players signed on. We just got to get Reinhardt re-signed. I don't think we're, I don't know, do we name a captain? We still don't have one after Nick Felino left. So I'm going to take away the C from Atkinson here. I'm going to have alternates again, I suppose, of Jenner, Atkinson, and Jones. But should that change? That is a big question. Depends on, are we committed to keeping Boone Jenner here? I guess that'll depend on if he signs an extension or not. And with this game being played by Cam Atkinson here, this should make him the longest tenured Blue Jacket of all time when it comes to seasons played, not all games played. Yeah, this is his 10th season. Is this his 10th? Or does it tie him with Klesla? I'm not sure. But he's still about 120 games away from Rick Nash, 118. Other records close to being broken as well, but we don't need to think about those right now. The longest serving player on the team. He had six goals in seven games in the playoffs last season. He needs to pick up where he left off. This is a team that is hungry for success. We are starving for success. We're coming off of a Metropolitan Division Championship. We need to keep it going. Keep our pedal to the metal. And let's just go into our home arena, Nationwide Arena, 
and take on the New York Rangers. Let's do it with a vengeance after a sad exit last season. And let's just see what we're made of. Show the talent. First period, down one nothing. Beautiful. Hervinen on Corpusalo. 11 shots, no goals. Boys, who's going to score that first goal this season? Who's going to show me that they're ready to have a career year here in Columbus and make something special happen on this team? It is Boone Jenner with that A on his jersey. Thank you very much. We're at a tied 1-1 game. Shots 23-20 for the Rangers. Headed into the final frame now. Power play goal from Panarin. The former Blue Jacket fans are booing him profusely. Power play again. That time we kill it off. Halfway through this third period, we are down by one. Thanks to Artemi Panarin. But Oliver Bjorkstrand ties this game up at two. Under five to go. We're back to a tie game. Next goal could most likely take it. But we're headed to overtime. Oh, we got to go see the season opener overtime. Shots 30 to 26. And it's two to two. Overtime at Nationwide Arena. Heidel versus Reinhardt at the draw. Next goal wins the, their team's first this season. Line A. Oh, quick rush there. It's broken up. Lafreniere. Oh, what a move from LXC to Heidel broken up by Patrick Line. A rare defensive moment from Line, and it's a huge one. He's leading the charge the other way here in this three-on-three -three overtime. Sam Reinhardt stops up in front. Falk glove save from Shesterkin, and he'll hang on. Justin Falk starting off his first ever full season with the Blue Jackets we're hoping for as he came over early last season and had a crazy 60-plus point year. Offensive zone faceoff now. One back. Jones one-timer scores! And the Columbus Blue Jackets win it in overtime here on the opening night of the season. I'm not even sure who got that one. If, if it was the second unit, maybe it was Texier? I don't even know. I think it was number 28. I'm not sure who that is. Let's see it. Off the draw. This is a textbook. Domi, one-timer there. I don't even know who got it. Number 28. We'll see in a second. Was it Bjorkstrand? Bang! Oliver Bjorkstrand. Whoo, baby. What a one-timer. Beautifully crafted. Stinger's loving it. Big smiles for everyone. And we start off game one of 82 with a dub. Oliver Bjorkstrand. With, he had a, such a good season last year as well, taking it 3 to the final. A two-goal night for Oliver Bjorkstrand. He had a career year last year, and then it was a career year the year before, I believe, right? So back-to-back -back career years, was that it? Uh, oh, no, in the real world, he had a career year. In this world, he had 76 points in 82 games, so really blowing out anything that he had ever done before. Uh, in goals and especially in assists. And he starts off the year with two big goals. 86 overall for a reason. Let's keep the ball rolling here. Let's get some games done. I'm still tempted to send down Liam Foodie, which is what I'm still considering. So I don't want to go over like seven games or whatever. But let me give him four solid games. Uh, we'll go against after we go see Adam Pellick and the Ducks. And we'll see what Foodie's looking like after that. At the New Jersey Devils now, we lose 4-3 in overtime. Then a 5-1 loss against the Flyers, 4-2 win against the Ducks. Uh, might as well make it five games. And then we'll go through the Predators, and we'll stop up at the, at the Chicago Blackhawks. Predators, we beat them 5-3. So 3-1-1 one, and one after five games. Seven points in five games for Oliver Bjorkstrand. Liam Foody, let me see what you got. I'm giving you that, those very expensive power play minutes. He has two points in five games and is a negative one. I'm just trying to think what would be better for his growth, right? One point on the power play as well. 47 points last year in Cleveland. Let me send him down and see what his chemistry fit is like with this coach. So let me see here. Liam Foody has a good second line fit, actually. So, oof, like, let's say I swap him out for Benino because I'd be sending Benino up. Put Foody here. Second unit gets only a plus three. First line, he keeps the plus one, but could he put Bemstrom there? This is tough. Could go plus three, plus three here, because that would help everybody's growth. I would need another power forward on this team that fits the chemistry, because Korshkov really helps the chemistry there. Foodie doesn't have a good fit on the first line. That's the only issue. I don't know. Maybe another coach would be better, but I'm not going to start rotating through coaches, a carousel of coaches until I find someone and take 100 years to do that. It's just a player type holding us back here. We just have a good power forward on the second line, but then we don't have anybody for the first line. So maybe I go sign another power forward, but then who gets knocked out of the lineup here? Maybe Sevier or Drury? I don't know. That's a really a tough call here, but let me, tr I guess we'll try it. We'll try it and uh, we'll call up Benino. Because, I don't know, we could put Shaw on the fourth line and gets a zero. 
But Benino getting called up. Let's see how he looks for the chemistry. I think he is. He's also a bottom six fit. See here, Benino. Oh, not even, eh? He's not a great fit. He'd really be just for injuries. So let's try Kurashev then as our fourth line center. We want him to get growth. He's low top six. We swap Shaw and Robinson here. That gets a zero on the line. Not bad. It's not bad at all. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to fix up the special teams uh, in the NHL and the AHL. And then we'll keep on simulating with this for, let's say, five games. And we'll see how they do in the AHL. They started playing three games, one goal for Sveshnikov, nothing for Korshkev, Perot, nothing. Okay, so maybe Foodie is the little spark that they need. And then I will also sign a power forward for the AHL. So I'll be back when all that is done. All taken care of. Let's keep on simulating now against the Chicago Blackhawks. We beat them 3-2 in the shootout. Waiting for Rhett Gardner to sign on. Power forward. Uh, Schlappick pulled groin. Uh, head coach going to replace him for the moment because Gardner should be here in a second. 4-3 win against the uh, uh, Maple Leafs. And Gardner is signed on in the shootout, no less. Nine points in seven games for Bjorkstrand. We're 0 3 and 1 in Cleveland, so we need some help ASAP. Let me fix up those lines there, and then we can finally really be simulating. Okay, so Slapping needs to come back from injury, but aside from that, we're pretty much good to go with Gardner in that lineup now. Coming up against the Dallas Stars, we are 5 1 and 1 through our first seven games of the regular season. Very nice to see. A couple games in the AHL just got played. Okay, back to back wins. That's what we need to be seeing down, down there for the growth, for the morale, and all that good stuff. So let's go see a game now. Let's actually put something in our schedule to be excited about. And that'll be the Florida Panthers. I believe. Actually, they're coming up first right here. Perfect. Right, right away. The team that eliminated us in seven last year. So 4-1 win against the Stars. We'll go see Florida now in Florida. They're 3-2-3 three, three to start their season. So let's do it. Let's get some revenge here. First period, 2-0 Panthers, Tippett and Denisenko. Second period, 4-1. Fantastic. Bennett and then Hornquist. We're down 4 nothing when Sam Reinhardt stops the bleeding. We're being outshot 28-15, doubling our shots. We're down 5-1 now as Barkov scores 17 seconds into the period. Robinson, though, says, okay, we're down by three with a lot of hockey left to be played. Spencer Knight between the pipes. Power play Florida. We kill that one off. Power play for us now. It would be great to capitalize on that, but we do not. We are being outshot 39-22, to down by three. Let's just call it a day, and we lose 7-2. to Great job, Corpusalo. I put all my confidence in you, and you just fall apart. Thank you very much. Last time we slow sim for a while, I guess. Let's get a little bit of simulation done, and we'll go see a good team. I don't know. The Senators. Let's go. For all the Senators fans out there who are currently 5-0-1, oh, we'll go see them. Shopping fully healed, put him in the lineup, and then hit the road. Whew, it is not easy to run a hockey team. Let's simulate now. Vancouver Canucks, let's do it. At home, 4-1 win against them. 3-2 win against the Rangers. Okay, 2-1 win. We're the calendar sim kings. Let's keep it up. Home and home, well, not home and home, a California road trip here. Western, West Coast road trip, excuse me. 4-1 win, 4-1 win. Winnipeg, 3-2 win in the shootout. We're 12-2-1. 4-3 overtime loss. Let's burn through the Panthers. Let's go. Let's get them this time after losing 7-2. This time we shut them out 2 to nothing. Bang. 13-2-2. Corpi Sala was angry. 2-1 loss. It's been close losses, though. All of them have been pretty close aside from the 7-2. 13-3-2 is the record. New Jersey Devils. 4-1 win. Home and home. Three. Sorry. Back-to-back -back home games, I mean to say. I keep saying home and home. 3-2 loss. 5-3 win. Now I'm against the Montreal Canadiens. We, come on, 5 nothing loss. They they wait for it that long, and they just hit you with a 5 nothing loss. But then a 3-2 win to bounce back. And we are 16-5-2 heading into this game against the Senators, who are currently 15-7-1. This should be a good matchup. 20 points in 23 games for Oliver Bjorkstrand. Down in Cleveland, how we looking? 13-5-2. Liam Foodie's at a point per game. Yes, sir. Very, very nice. A Canadian tire center. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's see if the if the Senators can get to 16 wins or if we're going to 17. Very close record. First period, 1-0. Oliver Bjorkstrand on Henrik the King Lundqvist. Second period, oh boy. Four goals against Corpi Salo. This is a major issue, my friends. This guy is terrible in the slow sim. For Menton, Brown, Schwartz, and Tierney. Four goals in 12 minutes. Down by three heading into the third. This is a major issue. We can't be the calendar kings and then we go into the slow sim and we're the slow sim lemons. You know, what are we going to do? Halfway through this third period, we can't get any scoring going either. I don't know if it's just the... Oh, wait, we can't even score. 5-1 loss. Shots were 30-27. to 27. We lose 5-1. to one. But now we're going to go on a 15-game winning streak, right? 
let's just let's just sim. No specific date. Let's just sim. A third, a starter prospect, and top two D and a why for Atkinson? No, why would I do that deal? That's a terrible trade. Three two loss against the Coyotes. Sharks, we beat them five to three. I believe we can now extend, uh, offer an extension to Sam Reinhart now that we're past December first. So let me see that. And what would he be asking for? Would it make sense to try and do that right now, or is it January first? Uh, yeah, it must be January first. We're not allowed to extend him yet. But we could think about options like Rosovic. Does he still want crazy money? Now we want. Okay, now he's back down to earth. We could go a one-year type of thing, but no rush. I don't think. By the way, seven points. Only seven points in twenty-six games for Rosovic and a negative nine. You're killing me, Rosovic. That's crazy. He's listed as a second-line forward, but he's a two-way forward, so it would hurt the chemistry. And then who comes off the second line if we put Rosovic to the to the second line? Does he really deserve it with one goal all season long here? A fantasy you five points in 26 games. Third line, terrible plus minus. Whoa, pump the brakes over here. Terrible. It's just the first line carrying. What about the fourth line? Even Shaw has two goals and seven points. Even Robinson. A fantasy you, do I move him down or something? I don't know. Do I, can I move Shaw up, Roslevic down, and Robinson up here? Let's try that. Robinson, Jenner, and Shaw. Defense, plus six, four, zero, negative three, negative one. What were Shaw fault? 16 points in 26 games. Not bad at all. Kyle Woods, seven goals, ten points. Let's hope that plus five keeps rolling. Uh, Corpus Salo, 906 save percentage. Drieger, 917. So maybe we should get him playing a bit more. Yikes, the record's been great, but there are some underlying issues that we have to be thinking about here. Canucks are 12, 12, and 3. We lose 4 to 3 against them. Yeah, I'm gonna give Drieger a little bit of a run here. I'm turn off auto rotate goalies and give Drieger like five games in a row. Okay, Drieger's gonna go on a little bit of a run here. Starting off against the Coyotes, who are a 500 team, 14, 14, and 1. We lose 4 to 2. Fantastic. Starting to slip over here, my friends. Bruins beat us 5-2. to two. Now we go Senators. We lose 4-2 to two against the Senators. And we barely win 3-2 in the shootout against the Hurricanes. We're 18-11-2. Drieger, you're out of here, I guess. But I really don't know what's happening. We're, it seems as though our playmakers are doing playmaking, but there's not a lot of scorers. Aside from, maybe I need to spread out Bjorkstrand and Line A. Atkinson, 9-5. and five. Let me, I don't know, Texier first line? And Bjorkstrand second line? I really don't know here. This is odd. Because uh, no, that wouldn't help chemistry. Shaw's doing all right. Rosovic just terrible at negative, negative 11s here. Thanasi and Rosovic are supposed to be a good third line. Robinson's doing amazing, so just keep him there, I guess. 3 1, negative 1, negative 4, negative 4, negative 2. <sighs> Do I put Falk to the top pair? Go plus 3. I don't know. Falk top pair, fine. Uh, Drieger, 902 save percentage. I guess not terrible, but get Corpusalo back in there. Give him a rest. I'm gonna, we're going to be pausing this one very soon. I think at uh, January 1st, we're going to pause this one because there are questions to be asked and uh, we need answers. Flames are 24 6 and 1. They beat us 5 to 3. Way too many L's right now. Way too many L's. Panthers are under 500. If they beat us, we're stopping right here. 2-1 win. These terrible teams, they're 13, 19, and 3, the Capitals. Let's go, please, come on. 4-1 win, thank you. We'll stop, uh, we'll, not, we'll, stop. We'll, we'll pause to watch the um, the Sabres. What's up here? Corpusalo 906. I don't know, is, the, is Kurashev the issue here? I don't know. I don't think he's really the issue. Bjorkstrand, Atkinson, only 11 goals, 5 assists from Atkinson. The scorers are not scoring. It's odd. We had 60 points from Falk and 70 points from Bjorkstrand. Crazy, 40 plus goals from Line A. The Sim is not with us right now, which is making me think we should take a pause. Sometimes you want to ride the hot Sim and put an end to the to the cold Sim, you know? First period, 2-2. Pajot and Olofsson score two goals in two minutes on Gorpi Sal, but then Gavrikov... And Max Domi score a couple on Uko Pekalukinen. Second period, down 4-3. Bjorkstrand puts us ahead, but then Peugeot again. Two goals in two minutes. As we are now down 4-3, only being outshot 
but four goals against. Roslovic ties it up. There he is. His second goal of the season. And Bjorkstrand puts us up 5-4. to four. Two fast goals in a minute and a half. Power play for the Sabres. We're killing that one off. Even though it's an extended one, we get it all done. And Line a puts us up by two halfway through the third period. But Jack Eichel brings the Sabres back within one with a power play goal. 6-5 for the Blue Jackets here. With under three to go. With a slight one goal lead. Will it be enough? And it just is. Wow. Wild third period. We win at 6-5. Two goals and an assist from Bjorkstrand, but the same from Olafsson and Peugeot. I don't want to be winning games 6-5. That is not what I want. So we got the Christmas break now. Take it easy, everyone. Enjoy time with the family. But, man, is it the special teams? What is it? What? Because th there were some... That was like, what, two or three power play goals we let in that game. So what's the power what's the power play and the penalty kill at? Power play is at 14.9. Penalty kill is at 80.8. It's not terrible. Could be better, but hold on, look and the Sabres, worst team in the league. We barely beat them. Power play, uh, we're one of the better sorry, that's point percentages, sorry. 14.9, yeah. We're one of the worst in the NHL when it comes to the power play. And our penalty kill at 80% is also close to the bottom. So we could probably overhaul the special teams. It, but it's crazy. We have plus 5, plus 3 on the power play. Our penalty kill is is fine, you would think, overall-wise. But, okay, I'm not going to touch the power play. Yet, that is. But I will fix the special... The, uh, oh, it's plus 5, plus 1. Uh, maybe we need more scorers here. Like, I don't know, Line A or Atkinson. Let me, let's put Line A here on the first unit. Keeps with the plus five. I'll swap him there. Uh, keep Falk and everybody else. Domi, uh, I guess Atkinson, Domi, Texier. Wierenski and Jones, uh, they're scoring. Yeah, they're scoring. They are scoring. But let me look at the penalty kill. Boone, Jenner, Max, Domi. So let me move Jenner to the second. Let me take out Domi. I'm going to put Reinhardt instead. Uh, Roslovic, uh, he has good defensive stats. I don't know. Shaw, maybe Kyle Woods not cutting it. 84, 90, 88. 84, 90, 88. Gavrikov is 86, 85, 87. Carlson, no. So Wood makes sense. Jones on the second unit. Maybe it's helping. I don't know. Falk has 20 points in 19 games. Uh, keep Jones and Falk. Maybe swap Wierenski around. Go Falk, Wood, and then Wierenski, Jones. Or Wierenski, Wood, and Falk, Jones. Now at Reinhardt. I don't know. Maybe Jenner with Shaw will spark something. We're at, what, 80.8%? Let's simulate to the end of uh, December, like three more games. We'll stop on January 1st. We'll see if it improves, even if it's just a little bit, if it improved from 80.8%. We'll pause and see what our questions are, and then we'll pick it back up next episode. Beat the Hurricanes 3-2 in the shootout, just like a couple weeks ago. Another 3-2 shootout win against the Islanders. And then a 6-4 loss against the Penguins. That's brutal. That is brutal. <sighs> Man. 35-39 and 39 for Reinhardt. What's going on, though? Is it the goaltending? What is it? 904 save percentage, 2.77 goals against. Not terrible. Drieger's not terrible either. But we'll pause here after 38 games, almost at the halfway mark. We'll, we will pause. Did we improve at all from the 80.8% here of the penalty kill? 79.5 uh, got worse. Fantastic. So let me know your thoughts on the penalty kill. Something is absolutely definitely changing. Put in your suggestions for what it will be, but something is changing on the penalty kill, perhaps even the power play. Reinhardt, 35 points in 38 games. He's on pace to continue doing the crazy stuff he was doing last season. Not scoring a lot, though. That's the issue. Getting the assists. Bjorkstrand, 21 goals and 32 points in 38 games. Line A, 17 goals and 26 points. Falk, 23. Texay, 21. That's great. Domi, 21. Orensky, 21. Atkinson, 11 goals, 18 points. Uh, Jenner, negative 13. Roslovic, negative 12. Ah, man. Kurashev Shaw has 8 points in 33 games. Athanasiu has 8 points in 38 games and a negative 12. It doesn't make sense that Shaw's outscoring all these guys. The plus minuses are shameful. Jenner, Roslevic, Athanasiu. Someone's got to be traded. Someone's got to be moved. Something. Something. Corpy Salo is doing okay. Drieger has a bad record, but good numbers. What's up? Let me see. go see the uh, Winnipeg Jets. What's up with Merzlikens? How many shutouts does he have this season? 4-3-0 with one shutout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what to say, though. Really don't know what to say. 
Let me look at the entire NHL while we're here. And then we'll take a look at the trade blocks, extensions, blah, blah, blah. Uh, entire league is Patty Kane with 52 points. Tied with Malkin also at 52 points. Crazy how they just never stop. Cooch, Crosby, Stamkos, Matthews, Voracek's up there. O'Reilly, Pedersen, Phillips, Forsberg, 42 points. Uh, all the usual suspects, as I always like to say. Rickard Raquel killing it. And goalies in the NHL. Uh, we've got Corpy Salo leading the league and tied for the league's lead, league lead in wins at 21. Uh, Mikey LaForge, the created player, killing it over on the Oilers. Best numbers in the league, though, with minimum, let's say, I don't know, 10 games. Minimum 10 games, best number. Cam Talbot doing amazing. Wow. Probably the best goal in the league right now. Uh, yeah, him and Shesterkin. Talbot and Shesterkin, the best goalies in the NHL at the moment. But we'll take a quick look at the trade blocks after we look at um, what the extension for Sam Reinhart would be costing. He's not, no, he's doing very well. Not as good as last season, so maybe the demand is slightly lower. He does want to extend, thank goodness. And he wants 9.1 for seven years. It doesn't change, actually. Let's go to eight years. So we could go to 85%, but I don't think I'm going to try to be super cheap and go lower, lower, wait this, wait that. Maybe let's just get it done. So 9.125, 85% is 7.756. So seven years at 7.775. Can we do that? Yeah, let's try it. Seven years at 7.775 for Sam Reinhardt. And we'll see if he accepts that. I don't think it would make sense to wait any longer. We're happy with him. We want him to stay here. Let's do it. So we'll check so. out the trade blocks here. I can't believe the Ducks are 19, 19, and 3. What? With that goaltending and that team? Adam Pellick, 5 assists, negative 6. Woo, baby. Check these uh, blocks here, the trade blocks from all the teams in the NHL. Just for anyone who could be interesting overall-wise. Perhaps any prospects. Not a lot of people on the block. Ruzika, Connor Zary on the block. Sniper, first round pick. Jacob Pelletier, playmaker, first round pick, also on the block. Uh, Jordan Stahl, very high overall though. He'd be, and he doesn't fit any of the lines. Nino Niederreiter, like no trade value. Fits the first line. Sniper, seven goals, six assists in 37 games though. Eh. Jake Gardner hasn't even played, so he would be a cheap pickup as well. Two years left though. Ugh. William Eklund, Bocage, Thomas Harley, Stranges, mm, Oilers have Broberg on the block. He has a fair bit of value. He has 17 points in 30 games in the AHL. Florida, Lundell, and Surdif, Chieson over on the Kings. Good power forward. Fits the third line, maybe for chemistry, and he has 19 points plus 8 in 43 games. Could consider him. Pierre-Edouard Belmar doesn't fit anything. Wild Duck, Jack Johnson, Canadians, Jesse Elinen. I like him as a prospect, playmaker. I like him very much, a lot of value. Guli, Mishak, Predators, nobody. Devils, Michael Stone, Islanders, Leo Komarov, Rangers, Brett Howden. Senators, Dezingle, there he is. He has 28 points in 39 games, wow. Fits the second line. Ratcliffe, 76 overall, medium top six, power forward. Think about him. Even though it's in the AHL, 11 points and a negative one. Maybe, I don't know. Samuel Poulain, Nick Felino. we could bring the captain back. He has 15 points, negative one. Doesn't really fit the lines, and he has a bit of an expensive contract. He is on the block, though. Or we could think about it next season, if need be. Antoine Morin, Jason Spezza. He fits the fourth line. That could be our fourth line centerman answer right there, Jason Spezza. Uh, even Wayne Train is on the block. Fits the third line as a power forward. Cheap as well at 0 0.9. 20 points in 40 games. This could be big with the Leafs. I could see a potential deal with the Leafs. Getting Spezza and Simmons from them in exchange for, I don't know, who do you want? Uh, Fantasy or something if we're not going to keep them? I don't know. They have a lot of good options here. A lot of good depth pieces. Brad Richardson even. I love Brad Richardson. Two-way forward. I don't know. You know Gagne, Bodker. Interesting. Canucks got JT Miller on the block, playmaker, fits the second line, a lot of value, but that's interesting, two years left on that deal, Tanner Pearson, a lot of trade value for him too, Michael Furland, power forward, fits the third line, uh, he has 22 points and a plus 8 in 40 games, Jay Beagle, Antoine Roussel, another, he's a grinder, expensive contract though, Vegas have the Shizen, Capitals, Hendricks Lapierre, and Winnipeg Cole Perfetti, 
All right, so there are all the trade blocks. Long episode, a lot of moves had to be made. Still more moves to make possibly, but the record is good. We are 23-13-2. Cleveland, we're 23-7-3. The Liam Foodie experiment seems to be doing well because he has 28 points there. We'll probably just keep him there. Schlappick, Bemstrom, all doing okay. Perrault has 23 points in 33 games. Good to see growth from him. And, of course, Mattis Kivlenix. He currently has... He is currently 9-5-2 and two with two shuttles. But Tarasov has been killing it and running with the started rule here. So, sheesh. Good for Danil Tarasov. But... We'll wrap it up there. Let me know your thoughts on all that stuff, the special teams, any trades we might want to be making, line changes to be made, any of that sort. And hey, just thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, if you enjoyed this episode, leave a like. Consider subscribing as well. You'll be made aware of all the uploads here on the channel. Make sure you check out the Twitch link in the description that brings you to the Twitch page where we're streaming our current MLB The Show 21 franchise mode series. And any, all the links for everything else, including the Discord server where you can hang out with us there, talk hockey and everything else. But I'm looking forward to the second half of year number two. Lots to get done here in 2022. So I thank you once again for watching. Looking forward to all of those thoughts in the comments and the Discord server. And I will see you all in the next one.